and it ensures that all judicial justices of the peace are all treated with the same level of judicial independence. So, zero assumptions, logic, reason, and law, equality is maintained, and we maintain independence in the courts on one side, and on the other side, their interpretation, you will find that they require two assumptions. They have to abandon logic and reason and law. There is no equality because their assumption is members of the, their law society are better than us, and it doesn't maintain the judicial independence in the courts because it demands that we see the judicial justices of the peace, some of whom are going to be uh, not subject to the Legal Profession Act, and some of whom are, based solely upon whether or not they are drawn from the uh, Law Society's membership rules. So that's why I'm going to win. No assumptions, logic, reason, law, equality, and maintain judicial independence. They don't have any of that, and I'll show you. Now the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the fact that this section is in fact titled Application. It is not titled Exemption. Application. Now this is important because what the Law Society and what Carmel Wiseman wants to do and wants you to do is to assume that everyone, that it's applicable to everyone. But if that was the case, they wouldn't call it Application. They would call it Exemption or exemption to the Act. When they refer to the application of the Act, they must, unless they want us to operate on assumption, they must specifically mention the people against whom it is being applied within the body of words, which is Section 1. Now, in Section 1.1, you look in there, you're not going to find the word the public anywhere. You will find lawyer. So, my contention that it is applicable against lawyers and not public is in fact supported by A, the title, and because you can actually point to the word lawyer in there under application, it gives me what I like to call a reason. And therefore, it doesn't abandon a reason. And let's try the logic. Hey, what's the whole thing called? The Legal Profession Act. Hmm, maybe it only applies against lawyers who are making their living as a legal professional. So, logic is not offended. What does the Law Society want, however? The Law Society requires assumptions. They want you to assume that it's application is universal, that it's applicable to everyone, every member of the public, although it's not, it's not supported by the title. There's no reason there. Point to your logic or the reason why you want to say the public is subjected to this act. I can tell you, I can give you a very good reason why the lawyers are it, the word is mentioned in the section. But you want us to assume that the public are as well, and yet you have no reason. And since you're trying to use it outside of the legal profession, you have no logic. And you require it all to start off with your very first assumption, and that is assumption number one is that it is universally applicable to begin with. But here's the thing, if it was universally applicable, you wouldn't have to have a section you would starting out with application, would you? That's your assumption. It's not mentioned in the words. It's not supported by any of the words in there. It 
it's not the section isn't called uh, exemption from application. It's mentioned. It says quite a, quite specifically application. Public not mentioned in there. Lawyer yes. So that's section one, just the title so far, and already we see that they require one big assumption that it's universally applicable, and to accept that that universal uh, uh, that universal application that assumption to accept that requires us to take the word application and pretend it means exemption to abandon reason and logic I got more now let's look at what the section actually says here it states this act does not apply to a person who is both a lawyer and a part-time judicial justice as that term is defined in section 1 of the provincial court act I'm going to take that out. It's not necessary for this argument. In, that, in the person's capacity as a part-time judicial justice under that act, so that's what it says, this act is not applicable to a person who is a, a lawyer and acting as a part-time part judicial justice while they're acting as a judicial justice. That's some tricky language, isn't it? But let's examine it, break it down. Let's see what we see. Now we must also remember this part as well. This is very important here. All judicial justices of the peace must enjoy the same level of independence and immunity at all times. At all times. The exact same level. See, part of my plan it kind of depends on putting them in a position where they must recognize this. And it is the one thing they can't abandon. And if they do, well there's a a very wise saying, a house divided soon falls, and a house that divides itself ensures its own destruction. That court is akin to a house. Are they going to divide themselves, or are they going to ensure that this remains the case? Should be interesting anyways. Okay, so here we have the section with the references to the Provincial Court Act removed. And uh, it's almost like they put that in there just to make it extra confusing. But this way we'll get down to what is the nitty gritty. And it says, this act does not apply to a person who is both a lawyer and a part-time judicial justice in the person's capacity as a part-time judicial justice. So, who is it applicable to? They're telling us against whom it is not applicable. And we know that it's not applicable against someone who is a lawyer, thus we would, or, or we know it's not applicable against someone who is a lawyer and a part-time judicial justice of the peace, provided they're operating within that capacity. So we've got lawyer mentioned. Do we have, uh, and we have judicial justices mentioned, but do we have the public mentioned? I don't see where the public is mentioned. Now, let's see what happens when we, uh, using the laws of logic, move one word and don't lose the meaning of it. Instead of this act does not apply to a person who is both a lawyer and a part-time judicial justice in the person's capacity as a part-time judicial justice, we want to know where it does apply, so we're going to take that word not out of there and shift it. This act does apply to a person who is a lawyer and not a part-time judicial justice. And since they're not a person, since they're no longer a, a, a part-time judicial justice, there's no need to mention in that person's capacity part. So, to boil it down, 